Hi, this is Timothy from Scenario, and we are going to dive into user interfaces and icons today. First, I'm going to train a model using a simple data set of shapes in a style that I like that I generated on Scenario. For this type of model, I'm going to make sure that I use about 15 images in the data set and that I give a slight bump to the number of training steps over the default values. Once it's done training, I always like to generate a batch of images without a prompt to get an idea of what the model has learned. I don't expect fantastic results without any type of prompting or reference image, but I find it is very useful to get an idea of how best to approach what I am trying to achieve with the model. Next, I want to make a border area for a UI or game menu type of interface. So I'll describe it with the prompt, a user interface border, highly detailed, blank center area. Next, I'll quickly sketch a simple black outline as close to the border of the painting area as I can. Because I don't want to make a simple black border, I will reduce the influence of the reference image all the way down to zero to give the model all the room it needs to create. I will adjust the aspect ratio for either a mobile style or a console computer type game. Looking cool. I can see these could be easily used in many different types of heads up display menus or other types of interfaces. Next, I'll show you how easy it is to make adjustments without losing the structure of the output. I'll select one to work with and drag it over to the reference image area and replace my initial sketch. I'm going to switch to dual reference mode and select image to image plus control net and use the same reference image for both. On the control image, I will select structure mode and you can see the mode map here which will determine what the output consistency is going to be. The image to image reference will let the model know what sort of color palette I would like to see. So I'm going to quickly sketch some changes onto the image to image reference to change some of the color. We'll make the screen an electric purple and add some red accents on the edges. Here we can experiment with the influence levels of both references to strike the balance we want and I'll show you a couple. First with the influence 25 for image to image reference and the full influence 100 for the control image which is using control net. This one is really cool. Let's give the model more room to play by reducing the image to image influence to zero and the control image influence using control net structure to 50. Okay, these are looking great. Let's head over to model composition and see what else we can do with this model. I'll add the model I created and then I'll add some other LoRa concepts to enhance the model's knowledge base. The icon stylizer will increase the flexibility overall in the styles I can create, and enchanted realism is a wonderful way to add vivid colors. The striking illustrated icons is awesome for adding detailed drawings onto the icons itself. I'll name the composition and click test to open the workbench. I can adjust the strength sliders at any time. Even after I save the composition as a model, I can always adjust and dial these strength sliders, which is an amazing amount of control. Let's try to make an icon representing an agrarian land plot, using the prompt, a UI icon for an agrarian land plot. I love the style, but I want more farming elements in the icon with the idea that these represent an area of a game that produces a food resource. I'll add some more descriptive prompts, farm, vegetables, flowers. That is very satisfying and easy to do. Happy creating.